Um, just now calling up Miranda, who's going to lead us through a discussion on uh, policy in, in Asia. Thanks, Miranda. Thanks, Simon. Um, we've got a jam-packed panel coming up next, so please come on up. Um, Raymond Chan, who is a member of the Legislative Council uh, here in Hong Kong. Uh, we also have Tomoko Nakagawa, Mayor of Taka Takarakazuka in Japan. Um, delighted to have, I'll go on this one, I think, so okay. perhaps if you'd be kind enough to sit there. Um, Geraldine Roman, who is a member of the House of Representatives in the Philippines. We also have Nariluk Pachayapum, who is the director of the International Human Rights Division at the Ministry of Justice in Thailand. And last but not least, we have Patrick Haverman, who's the regional partnership advisor um, at the United Nations Development Programme on the end. So You're thank you very much here. all. Uh, for coming along. Jardine, your seat is here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, all sit down, get comfortable. Um, I've been looking forward to this panel uh, enormously because of the, the breadth um, of Asian perspectives that we, uh, we, we hope to discuss. Um, initially, I think probably helpful if we get a sense of, of kind of individual perspectives along here. So, Raymond, I was wondering if I could start with you, almost as the, uh, the, the, the kind of host of proceedings. Here we are, delighted to be in Hong Kong. Um, could you give us an overview of uh, where LGBT policy is currently in Hong Kong? Because it's, it's a slightly confused picture. Uh, yes. Hello, everybody. I'm Raymond Chen from Hong Kong Legislative Council. I'm the first and the only one openly gay <laughs> legislator in Hong Kong. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Uh, do you know the Hong Kong political situation? Um, we are the legislative beat, but we have a lot of right to make law. We just can pass the laws uh, proposed by our government. Uh, our government, um, the inertia of our administration, administration uh, our uh, chief executive, Carrie Lam, uh, when Hong Kong win, uh, Hong Kong can host the gay games in 2022, uh, the reporter asked her, oh, will, will you say congratulations to the gay games? Do you know what her answer? Her answer was, I'm Catholic. <laughs> so our government will, will do a will lot proactive work on any issue to improve the LGBT rights. Do you know there's no any laws in Hong Kong to protect the LGBT against discrimination? Our government just said um, they prefer to eliminate it uh, discrimination by education and um, administrative measures. Uh, I want to ask a simple question. Do you know there is group of practice against discrimination in employment on the ground of sexual orientation in Hong Kong? <laughs> yes or no? Uh, some, somebody yep. knew that. Uh, do your company adopt this curve of practice? <laughs> so, you, 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 you see, um, just use the uh, administrative measure cannot eliminate uh, um, uh, discrimination mm. in Hong Kong. We force our government to launch the consultation on the legislation on anti-discrimination ordinance for more than 20 years. We should have our legislation before the handover of Hong Kong, but nowadays we still have no legislation and still no uh, consultation. But fortunately, um, Hong Kong is an international city. Um, our community, especially business community, uh, especially the powerful finance sector demands diversity. Uh, we can bring the matter to the court. Um, the government should comply with the court ruling. So there, there are some uh, crucial cases on our court. If we win, then we can make uh, great progress on the LGBT rights in Hong Kong. We think we can 
have good results in the near future. So some optimism in, in Hong Kong. I mean, Geraldine, crossing over to the Philippines, um, what, what is the state of play there? There's obviously concern around President Duterte's attitude to human rights in, in, in uh, many areas. Um, how does that impact on, on the LGBT community and LGBT policy? Uh, thank you for, for that question, Miranda. Anyway, I am Geraldine Raman. I am the first openly transgender woman to be elected into the Philippine House of Representatives. So anyway, relating our fight for uh, human rights to also include LGBT rights, uh, the current administration on the surface is very, uh, you know, uh, very difficult to interpret. But in terms of action, I am happy and proud to say that after 19 years of languishing in the Philippine Congress, uh, the anti-discrimination bill on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity and expression has been unanimously approved in the House of Representatives. I think that merits a round of applause. Yeah. Miranda, I have always been a, of the belief that uh, actions speak louder than words. We have a president who is on the surface, uh, sort of, uh, you know, he may be uh, uh, interpreted or uh, uh, judged as misogynist, but uh, at the same time, you have a president who also speaks in favor of same-sex marriage. And uh, when he used to be mayor of Davao City, which is a city in the south of the Philippines, he had one of the most advanced anti-discrimination ordinances in the entire country. So what I'm telling you is this, basically. We, as members of the LGBT community, have been victims of premature judgments. I don't want to judge our president on the basis of certain, of course, the ideal situation would be for him to be politically correct at the same time and then do the work. But you know, nobody is perfect. So, as a legislator, we're delivering on our promises. At the same time, we also have our civil partnership bill brewing in the lower house of uh, Congress, and uh, it's taking strides. It has, uh, I think, uh, well, it's being discussed now at the committee level, and we hope that before our legislature ends, we shall have uh, approved this uh, very controversial, uh, yet very significant bill. And the third step would be, uh, in the coming months, a gender recognition law for uh, my tra trans uh, brothers and sisters. So in that sense, uh, we are advancing in our very, very Catholic country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Representative. Um, my next question um, for you, Mayor. Um, we heard on the Japanese panel earlier, um, various, various delegates explaining to us uh, a theme which I think resonates around Asia, which is that actually, even within countries, there's enormous diversity of attitudes towards LGBT policy. Uh, you've obviously tried to enact enormous change. Um, how can sort of other cities, other areas, other regions, and ultimately, uh, you know, the larger Japanese government itself learn from what you've been doing? はい、え、中川智子です。日本から来ました。え、今あの、ご質問にあるように日本政府は今全く動きがありません。ですからアジアでは非常に遅れている。まさにノート答えられた皆さんは正しかったですね。あの、今フィリピンのお話も聞いて
市の中でたった7つだけの自治体がパートナーシップ証明を出して同性婚を行政として地方政府として受け止めてサービスを同等にしていこうというふうな形をしておりますけれどもなかなか法律ができないと地方でできることは限りがあります。ですから政府を追い詰めていこうということで今自治体が手を取り合っていくでましてや2年後には東京オリンピック・パラリンピックがある中で東京都がやっと重い腰を上げて今差別解消条例を作ろうとしていますがまだなかなか見えてきません中身がですからこの7つの私たちの自治体でどんどんどんどん広げていって国を動かす法律を作るそのために今ネットワークを作っていますそして一番はやはり当事者の方が議員になって自らしっかりとそのことを議会で発言していくその勇気に私たちは勇気をもらってそして前に進めていこうと思っていますえ本当にまだまだ弱いです日本の政府は遅れてます。On your point about、um, the network, Mayor, do you think that the central government is adequately using their network? I mean, presumably, if, as you say, ahead of the Olympic Games, they want to be looking at this issue, they want to be looking at others too. I mean, are you ever consulted by figures from the central government? Are you. Um, brought in as a, you know, an advisor? Did they ask you how you did, what you did? I don't know. 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 そして企業、まあ、大企業が中心ですがどんどん行政より先に進んでくれていますのでそのネットワークも今後作っていかなければいけないと思っています日本の国を動かすために頑張ってここまでやってきました Thank you、um, and now look I, I wanted to turn to Thailand、um, as a country that I、uh, Visit fairly often on my, on my travels,、um, often for reasons、uh, related to the military government, which、uh, on Tuesday, I think it was four years since the coup happened,、um, that saw、um, that the, the current government take control. Obviously, there were concerns at the moment about press freedom, about critics being locked up, about、uh, politicians being、uh, charged for sedition. How high up on Thailand's human rights agenda are LGBT issues at the moment. Okay, thank you. Um, um, I think everyone in this room is well aware of the situation in Thailand, about the political instability in Thailand. But it doesn't mean that there is no progress on development and on promotion and protection of、uh, the rights of LGBTI. Because、um, I, I think within this current government, there are a number of developments h a p p e n within this current government, although they are the, the military government. But I, I will I,、um, explain you all about the,、um, the development both in policy, law, and in practice. Like in pa- policy,、um, the, this current government includes LGBTI into the national human rights um, um, plan. Which is the key instrument of the human rights guideline of the, of, the, of the country. And also, the government agency has to follow this national human rights plan. And、uh, LGBTI is、um, indicated as one of the、uh, target groups to be protected under the national human rights plan. Uh, and th- this plan, we are now implementing the third national human rights plan, which will be valid until the end of this year. And we are now in the process of drafting the fourth national human rights plan, which will be valid from、um, 2019 to 2022. And the LGBTI is also included in the, in the plan. And, al- and also, importantly,、um, 
uh, last year, at the end of uh, in November last year, government announced the National Agenda on Human Rights, which is um, uh, aims to uh, strengthen the implementation of the National Human Rights Action Plan, which I think it will be um, the situation is is to ensure at the policy level, and this is also to ensure that all agencies will incorporate incorporate uh, human rights into their work and also to ensure the, um, that the government will put the human rights into the priorities of, of their policies. This is the first one for the, for the issue of policies. For the law, we have the gender equality law, which is actually adopted within this current government as well. It's an act um, um, three years ago. And we are, I think the Ministry of Social Development and Human Security is um, currently studying the possibility to, to draft the um, Gender Recognition Act. And also for my, for my ministry, Ministry of Justice, we work on the, um, drafting the Civil Partnership Act. Um, the, the Civil Partnership Act is very interesting because it's allowed, um, I mean, in, in, we, work it, uh, we work for uh, many years and it uh, expected to, it is now at the final stage of um, revising and is expected to submit to the cabinet by the end of this year. And um, also we, are, uh, we work on the, um, uh, on the study, because actually the draft is actually finished um, two years ago, but the legal development committee uh, would like us to um, conduct some sort of comparative study with other countries which have the same, uh, same um, similar kind of this law. So we are now um, uh, request technical assistance from the UNDP, and uh, the, the, the study has just finished, um, um, I think two months ago because we, that we compare with many regions, and also we have a conduct a kind of consult, consultation with relevant, agency, relevant um, sector as well. So I think we, um, we are within these two months, we will finish the final stage and of revision and submit back to the Legal Development Committee again. And hopefully, if, it's, if the law is approved by the Legal Development Committee, it will be submitted to the cabinet by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. And for the practice, we are in practice, I, I think everyone knows that Thailand, we were well um, known, known as someone called is gay paradise, but actually it challenge remain exist. Um, but in practice, we, we, in practice we, we try our best to encourage all um, our sectors to, um, to respect the, the gender difference and, uh, and also the promotion and protection of the rights of LGBTI. And uh, as for the Minister of Justice, we, uh, we set up the committee to promotion and protection of the rights of LGBTI in justice system. Mm -hmm. um, this committee meet regularly and also conducts a visit of the detention center as well, and is uh, followed up by the lots of activities to improve the life of LGBTI. For example, like we, um, um, after we conduct visit in the prison, we uh, come up and discuss together and. Um, we decided to conduct study um, on the um, on the life of of the, of the treatment of trans inmates, and then um, this is also supported by UNDP. There, which is very generous to the Thai government. And um, then after we have this um, this uh, study, we are we submit it to the Department of Correction for uh, for them to improve the treatment towards the trans inmate in, in prison. So, in other words, there's a lot happening kind of across across the board, actually, in yeah. areas that we haven't necessarily... Uh, so so many. Like like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's in the um, a National Human Rights Plan, which is bind by all um, government agencies. And so it's this duty of them to implement the plan. Uh, but but I just give example from, from Ministry of Justice and also um, our office as... Um, an, uh, we call ourselves as LGBTI-friendly government office, mm -hmm. the first one in Thailand. Um, we, 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 this is not only because we have the LGBTI kid called peeps, right? <laughs> LGBTI peeps um, from top to from top level to um, to the um, working level, but we also uh, have the um, uh, policy to. Um, to uh, make them, you know, work happily in our office. The, like, the development of that policy is something I'm interested yeah. in. And you mentioned a couple yeah. of times that UNDP has has sort of helped push on that. I mean, uh, and that 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 is the like, kind of technical yeah. assistance. Yeah, yeah. Patrick, when sort of, we, like, could yeah. you speak to um, you know the kind of policy support that UNDP provides um, in the region? 
Yeah, so, so in general, I think the LGBT issue is, is, is an issue the UN is very passionate about. Mm -hmm. I mean, the UN bringing all the countries together. And I think it is this principle, now the principle that all humans are equal. And I think the UN really tries to help to work with different parties in society. So government, academia, the community itself, to bring everybody together to kind of like move that agenda forward. Uh, so we're working in, in, in different countries currently, in the Philippines and in Thailand and in China, with these different layers in society to see how we can move this, this agenda forward. Mm -hmm. um, and as well, we, we had talks with the economists as well, with, with, with different, uh, in different countries recently in India. Uh, and we really believe that yeah, we need to see where the most advance can be made. Uh, legislative is, is very important, but also like capacity building on the, uh, on the um, uh, in the community, but also kind of like this exchange of experiences. I think together as a world, we can we can move this this agenda forward. Of course. Um, could you speak to the kind of work you're doing in in China? <laughs> yeah, so in, in China as well. So in, in a lot of countries, it's 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 a it's a difficult discussion once in a while. But we we see where we can work. So in China, we have done also studies with the university to really show what's going on in, in the community. Uh, so we, we did a study with a with a big survey uh, among the LGBT uh, uh, community, uh, and we we published the report with the, with the University of, of Beijing. Uh, we did the first discussion on uh, transgender and health uh, in the UN compound in China. So we're seeing wh where the possibility for discussion and, and we move forward uh, the agenda in that mm. way. And this perhaps a, a question um, for, for Geraldine and, and Raymond. I mean, we've, we've heard a fantastic kind of breadth of approaches here. Um, do you think, though, that sort of the diversity of Asian countries and also indeed people within Asian countries also requires a diversity of approaches to dealing with this issue? Or do you think that there are co common elements? I mean, Geraldine, perhaps you'd like to... I think that the secret to the success of any uh, policy-making strategy is also customizing mm -hmm. uh, the approach. Uh, we have to be cognizant of the fact that there are cultural and religious differences as well as political ideologies in place. So the f more custom-made the policy is and the strategy is, I think uh, the more chances of success uh, it will have. So in the case of the Philippines, you know what? Um, first of all, the context of the Philippines is a, we're very Catholic. And uh, the, the approach before was rather confrontational on the part of the LGBT advocates. And, uh, you know, where you're, when you're in the halls of Congress, you have to behave like a politician. And you can't be an activist. There is a clear line that divides political activism and uh, being a politician. So I think the success, for example, in the passage of the anti-discrimination bill in the Philippines is that this time we became more diplomatic. We became more opening, open to listening to the concerns of those who opposed the measure and uh, we were successful. Which is not to say that 100% of the Philippine legislature agrees with the anti-discrimination bill. It was passed in the lower house. Now the hurdle that we have to overcome is the upper house, the Senate, which unfortunately is led by a conservative who has employed delaying tactics to eventually kill the bill. But my hope is that with the support of our president, uh, you know, uh, maybe there will be a change of heart. Mm. Uh, I think all Asian city need diversity um, and the successful experience in other cities can benefit uh, Hong Kong. For example, uh, Taiwan was now on its way to uh, become the first Asian city to legalize uh, same-sex marriage. It is very con uh, encouraging for Hong Kong. Um, when I, I remember last year when the Constitutional Court passed uh, uh, passed, uh, set the ruling on same-sex marriage. Uh, Hong Kong Legislative Council still discuss: Can the same-sex couple uh, can we cover our parlors that remains? So uh, some people said uh, chi Chinese people uh, value family value is conservative, but you can see Taiwan experience. Uh, so it is a very good example for us um, in our legislative council can um, counter the 
pro-establishment, uh, pro-China camp, legislator, they are more conservative and not want to pass any uh, measures to improve the rights of LGBT because they, they think if, if they do anything, on, if any progress on the rights of LGBT, then tomorrow we can same-sex marriage. <laughs> so they, they will stop it on the, on the uh, very first level. Uh, but I think we can also try our best to fight for all we can do. Uh, I'm not pessimistic, but I, I can get some rights for LGBT people. Uh, for example, uh, the government uh, promised me when they build the new facilities in Hong Kong, they will provide gender neutral toilets. <laughs> this is my, my request, then our government can take it. Before I ask uh, the mayor uh, another question, I just wanted to let you know, I, I will open it up very shortly uh, to your questions um, on the floor. But before that, um, Mayor, here we are, sort of on a, on a panel, um, powerful representatives from across Asia. Uh, as sort of Raymond mentioned, you know, he finds the Taiwanese example uh, sort of very interesting. What, what can you uh, learn or what have you learned today from sort of your fellow policymakers and how do you think that sort of interaction in the future uh, could you know, further the LGBT agenda um, in Japan and then also what can you teach others elsewhere if the central government's not listening, perhaps others in other countries are? Hmm. Eh. 本当にあの、台湾の、え、リポートというのは私たちに大きな勇気を与えてくれます。あの、日本もやはり、え、2年後がオリンピックということでですね、やはり台湾、アジアが動く、動けば、あ、しっかりと日本もそれに対して、え、その支援者を増やしていくために自治体で今動いているわけです。一番当事者と近い立場にあるので、その声を国に届けるために各都市が今活動し始めています。で、あの、大阪も8月、え、9月からとか、どんどん後に続く自治体が現れてきてますので、あの、アジアとの連携ということって一つ大きな今日は収穫できた。そしてフィリピンもそうですが、あの、私たちは日本はその法律を作らなければいけない。作ることができる可能性は持っていると um, opening it up to the floor, um, who would like to pose a question? I'm, I'm sure there are probably uh, going to be a fair, a fair few. Um, no one at the moment. If, oh, no, straight in the middle, perfect. <laughs> Hi, um, uh, Will Fries from Morgan Stanley. Um, quick thing for Raymond. Um, this is a very kind of, uh, you should forgive me, this little, very forward looking question, but, um, and, and I, I know it's really not probably very central to what you're focused on in the immediate future, but with the reabsorption of Hong Kong in, I think it's 2047, um, into mainland China, um, I'm curious if there's anything that you're doing or even thinking about now that is to protect any kind of policy advancements that are made in Hong Kong from anything that might happen after that date, after that event? Um, I think after the uh, handover of uh, Hong Kong to the China government, um, Hong Kong people can has our rights to um, introduce a best legislation to protect the LGBT people. This is not a too uh, political issue, I think, from the central government. Uh, it's not 
about the sovereignty and the dependence of Hong Kong. Um, but um, the pro Beijing camp, uh, I mean the legislator in, um, in the council, they, they're very conservative, uh, uh, not, not allow any improvement in the gay rights. They, they represent the um, traditional uh, family values. Uh, um, but fortunately, um, the younger, younger poor establishment legislator uh, is better than the old one. Uh, so in, in the future, if, if, the, if the government can um, introduce some policy, uh, such as uh, discrimination ordinance or a same-sex union ordinance, then I, I can persuade more pro-establishment uh, legislator to support our side. But I think the most um, effective method is to um, do it in the court. Uh, uh, some officer of the government told me that they welcome, welcome all of us put our matter on the court. If it been, the government is willing to do the improvement on our legislation. Uh, they want to see that because they, they do not want to make any decision and they don't want um, to bear the, um, the bear, bear that uh, the anti um, gay rights parties to uh, punish them. Uh, they push any gay rights policy, so they wait for the court the ruling. So I, I want to encourage members of our LGBT community uh, to challenge the government uh, on discrimination, uh, existing policy, and bias. Um, I also hope all of our allies can support, can voice us to support this challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions from the floor at this point? Yes, one at the back and then one at the side, please. Oh, and okay. Well, yes, one, two, three. Perfect. Thank you. If you'd be kind enough to stand up, that would be fantastic. At the back? No? I didn't want to ask. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. perfect. I always make this joke, it's because I'm brown. Um, but um, my question is for Geraldine specifically, and that is um, the, the, the bill you, you most recently passed, um, it doesn't, and I know it, it's self-explanatory in the sense that it doesn't touch on same-sex unions because that's not the goal of the bill, but looking at equality and, and protecting same-sex relationships, is this something you, you plan to work towards in the long term as you continue to progress on legislation, or is this a byproduct of um, the lack of political activism? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, work on civil partnership or marriage equality? Um, both the recognition of okay. same-sex unions and okay. marriage equality. These are two different uh, issues. One is the anti-discrimination bill, which I would also like to inform our uh, mayor from Japan, is not only on the national legislative level, it is also being proposed and successfully implemented on the level of the local government units because there are also legislative provincial and legislative town councils. So, you know, mm -hmm. if it doesn't work on the national level, you can approach it from down up. So we have around 25 cities and towns in the Philippines that have anti-discrimination mm -hmm. bills. The anti-discrimination bill is simply the right to work, mm -hmm. to study, to receive services from the government, and to access commercial and public establishments without being discriminated against on the basis of your sexual orientation and gender identity expression. That is one issue. The other issue is about marriage equality, which unfortunately we cannot call marriage equality in the Philippines. You know, I believe in taking baby steps. If I were to file a bill today on marriage equality, just by using that term, 
it is doomed to fail. So what is the point of filing a bill that will never see the light of day? So what I have done is to file a civil partnership bill mm -hmm. whose aim is to recognize the civil rights of stable relationships, whether same sex or not. And uh, I think this is going to work. I just follow the European model. And this is more feasible. This is more uh, attainable. So yes, they are indirectly related. Mm. Uh, let us say that the anti-discrimination bill is more urgent because we are dealing with the right to work. I mean, honestly speaking, in an ideal world, everyone can get married with whom he or she truly loves. But you know what? You won't die if you don't get married. But if you won't be, aren't able to access work or study, I mean, it's hard enough being LGBT. But can you imagine being LGBT and poor and marginalized because you can't access work? So these two things are related. And then, of course, we had the third step, which is gender recognition. You know, the good thing about the Philippines is that before, just the thought of somebody transferring from one gender to another was totally like, like, you know, they would say it's, it would open the door to Sodom and Gomorrah, these doomsday prophets. Well, you know what, when I won and I entered Congress, I look at my colleagues and say, hey, as far as I know, the sky hasn't fallen. Mm -hmm. And the economy hasn't collapsed because a Geraldine Roman was able to be true to herself. So maybe my hope is that because my colleagues were open enough to the idea of an anti-discrimination bill, and they have worked with me, and it has been a positive experience, I would like to think, maybe they would, have, they would uh, also open their hearts to allow my trans brothers and sisters, the chance that I was given 20 years ago. My story really, you know, there are no laws on gender recognition in the mm. Philippines. How I was able to do it was by pure luck. Uh, this happened way back in 1994, and we uh, petitioned a regional trial court. Uh, nobody questioned it. It became final and executory. But way back in, two well, afterwards in 2006, the Supreme Court came out with a ruling that saying that because there is a vacuum, legal vacuum, mm. we have to stop. So, mm. you know, so I have to fill in that void and legislate a gender recognition law. Mm. And my message is still the same to my colleagues. I mean, the sky will not fall, the economy will not collapse mm. if you allow trans men and trans women the right to be themselves. Thank you. Ah, just, yes, yeah, I know. 日本は2003年にトランスジェンダーの方の性を男性から女性に変えてもいいという法律はできたんです。戸籍法で。でもいくつも条件があって、手術を受けていなければいけない子供がいないこととかと、そのような条件を緩和しようという動きがあります。ですから、LGBTの、トランスジェンダーの方の戸籍法は成立したんですが、いわゆる差別禁止というようなこととか、同性婚を認めるという法律がまだ遠いと距離があるという状況です。今、彼女の話を
uh, rights. Is there an, any intersectionality with the work that you do for fighting for women's rights and with fighting for LGBT rights? And then secondly for Geraldine, in terms of just now you mentioned that you need to know when to be a politician and when to be an activist. And your politician side really helps you to push the anti-discrimination bill through um, parliament. In Hong Kong, there is often a um, lumping of uh, talking about Hong Kong independence as well as talking about other issues. What advice would you give to Hong Kong in, ha in trying to focus on pushing for anti-discrimination legislation and trying to separate that from all the other things that can often cloud um, at such a crucial cause? Thank you. あの、日本は、マイノリティに対して非常に偏見が厳しい。あの、女性もですね、法律は女性活躍法とか、こういう男女平等の法律とかはできるんですが、実際実感として女性が差別されてないかということは全く あの、時間できない。というのは私のように市長は今750の自治体の中で女性の市長は20人。女性のいわゆる公の様々なポジションにつく比率が日本が世界でも112番目という低さです。ですから全く実態が伴っていないというのが日本の状況です。そんな中でやはり女性がもっとということに対して女性があまり賛成をしない。今度の相撲のそのことも世論調査をしたら男性は女性も土俵の上に乗っていいじゃないか。それに賛成だという人
as I said, um, we have to separate that. Um, so this is the advice, just try to separate, but of course keep in touch with the uh, activists so that they can provide feedback to you. But, you know, these are two battlegrounds, really. You have government and then you have the streets. They say, though, that uh, there are, this is what you call the parliament of the streets. So that should be respected, in my humble opinion. Thank you all. I would love to continue. I'm afraid I'm not allowed to. Um, please give me a, a big hand of applause for our wonderful panel. Um, Um, we now have a 25-minute coffee break, so please do go out, um, get yourself something, and then come back in for the final couple of sessions and the big handover to London. Thank you.